Somebody say amen. We thank God for this fine morning. We glorify God because some of you are receiving us from here. Some of you are receiving us from somewhere else. And the Lord bless you for being here. The Lord bless you for coming. And let's go to the word of God in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter number 39. The book of Exodus chapter number 39. Uh, we'll read just verse 14, then you can put another finger in the book of Matthews and the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. The book of Exodus, chapter number 39. We'll read verse 40. If you get there, you say amen. If you are there, you say amen. amen. And the hangings of the court, its pillars and its bases, and the screen of the gate of the court, it records and it speaks in all the utensils for the device of the tabernacle for the tent of meeting, the finely worked garments for ministering in the Holy Spirit, the holy garments for Aaron and priest, and the garments of his sons for their service as priests, according to all that God the Lord had commanded Moses, so the people of Israel had done all the work. And Moses saw all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded, and so had they done it. Then Moses blessed them. The book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, we leave chapter number 16. And the book of Matthew, some are saying Matthew, the book of Matthew. <laughs> Chapter number 16. The book of Matthew, chapter number 16, verse 18. If you are there, you say amen. And I tell you, you are the Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Then the book of Matthew 18. Matthew 18. We believe in reading the scripture. Because part of the service should be reading the scripture. Matthew 18, verse 15. If you are there, you say amen. amen. You are there in Matthew 18, 15. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. And every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, turn to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be uh, to let be to you as gentle and as tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. The book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Ephesians is in the epistles of Paul. Ephesians, Ephesians, we just read verse 17 to 13. Ephesians 3, we read 17 to 21. If you are there, you say amen. 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 Let's appreciate our sister. <laughs> we are saying let us appreciate our sister. <laughs> amen. <laughs> yeah, the Lord bless her. The book of Ephesians 3.17. If you are there, you say amen. So that Christ may bear in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the sin what is the breath and life and hate and death and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And Lord, we honor you and we bless your name. 
Your word is new every morning. And today we pray as we hear your word. May you give us revelation of your word. May you give us understanding of your word. And may you help us obey your word. And as a letter to you, Holy Spirit of God, as your vessel, you may use me to accomplish your purposes. I ask you, Lord, anoint me afresh with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That may not speak my mind. I may not speak my experiences and emotions. But I may speak your divine mind. And I ask you, Holy Spirit of God, take charge of this praise. And we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Some Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. 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 This is called a blueprint. Tell your friend a blueprint. Those of us who are conversant <laughs> with such kinds of documents, they will be able to tell you, if you are told by someone that he wants a building, the first thing you prepare is a what? I can see Juliet is very glad. Uh, last year we are talking about her career. Blueprints are prepared so that when you are doing any kind of a project, this is your genesis. This is your starting point. This is a guy who wanted a multi-story building, and when they come, you don't give them stories. What they expect from you is a blueprint. Somebody say a blueprint. A blueprint is very important because no project can be successful without a blueprint. A blueprint is very important because the details of how the project will unveil depends on what is in the blueprint. In the book of Exodus, we find God giving Moses a blueprint, a blueprint of his tabernacle. In the real sense, God did not give Moses a dream, but God gave Moses details of how the tabernacle was to be made. Uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, where we've just read, we find Moses now putting a seal on, confirming that the tabernacle had been done exactly as the Lord had commanded him. And we find in the book of Matthew, Jesus asking disciples, who do people say I am? And Peter gets a revelation you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And Peter tells, uh, Peter is told by Jesus, You are the rock, and on this rock I'll build my church, and my no gifts of heads shall prevail against it. And we find uh, Jesus continuing on with the story that if somebody dash along, let there be witnesses, and he goes on and says, Whatever you people bide on this world shall be bowed in heaven. Whatever thing you lose from this world shall be lost in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Somebody say God's blueprint. Shout God's blueprint for the New Testament church. You see, in a project, there are three parties that are involved. Or let me simplify them to be two parties. In the project, we have the consultants. The, the consultants are the people who come up with the blueprints. They come up with the architectural, the structural, the bill of quantities. And these are the minds behind the project. And in the project, there is a contractor. A contractor is the person who has said, now take these blueprints and execute them. And do a project exactly as the blueprint shows. And I want to submit to us, brothers and sisters, we are like contractors as far as the church is concerned. The person with the mind of how the church should be like is God. And God has already developed a blueprint of how the church should be built. Somebody say a blueprint. In this blueprint, there's something I want you to check, which is very important in a blueprint. After the drawing is done and the blueprint is ready, there's something called a seal. Somebody say a seal. A, a seal is a, like a stamp that is put on a blueprint to certify this doing is done in the right way. And God being the other, the finisher of our faith, God, God being the architect of our faith, God being the consultant, the one with the blueprint, the one who is the mastermind of the church. 
Anytime a church is built according to his design, he puts a seal. Somebody says a seal. And any time the church is not built according to his purpose and his blueprints, he does not appear his seal on it. The book of Ephesians talks about that you may know the breadth, the length, the depth of the fullness or the glory of God so that you may have full glory of God in your lives, which signifies the seal of God. Somebody say the glory of God. What are the traditional methods of doing a church? The traditional methods of doing a church could be we want a church. We want to have more people coming and let's have a school beside this church. We want a church and we want so many people to come. Let's have a hospital beside the church. We want to build a church. Let's have a Bible college. We want to have a church. Let's have a, 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 a prayer center. We want to have a big church. Let's have a revival center. We want to have a big church. Let's have parallel church organizations in the church. Those are the traditional ways of doing a church. But the question should, we should ask ourselves, is that really the blueprint of building the church? The church did not come because some pastors sat down somewhere and they decided, let's have a church. The, the church did not come up because some disciples somewhere left their fishing and left their tax collection and they decided, let's have a church. The church was promised. The church was prophesied. The church started from the mind of God. And if the church is to be done the right way, we must do it as per the architect, as per the mastermind, as per the consultant who started it in figurative language. On this rock, I'll build my church. We, fi fi we find the first mention of the church. And it's mentioned by Jesus. It's mentioned by the other. It's mentioned by the builder, that is Jesus Christ. So the genesis of church is a conversation between Peter and Jesus. And that is the time Jesus says, on this rock, I'll build my church. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. Whose church? Whose church? Peter's church. Matthew's church. John's church. Elijah's church, Moses' church, whose church? Jesus' church. Praise be to Jesus. That's the first time we find the promise and prophecy about the church. And my dear, it was not already done. He was prophesying, I will, the future tells, I will build my church. And later on, we find him telling them in the book of Matthew 18. Whenever two or three are gathered for my name's sake, there I am with them. He confirms from this moment on, if two of you agree on something, three of you agree on something, and they meet in, for the names of God's sake, there I am with you. And then that defines the meaning of Quran of our church. How many people? Twelve people? Seven people? Two or three? Somebody say two or three. And God was trying to break it down what church is all about. Somebody say the promise of the church. And Jesus later on tries to explain to them how do you become part of this? How do you become part of this? And I want to say something. The church is not the kingdom of God. At times we think of a church and we hear people say the kingdom of God. The, the kingdom of God is bigger than the church. The, the kingdom of God is vast more than the church. Because the kingdom of God involves people like Moses. 
It involves people like Elijah. It involves people who were before the church was. And it involves the angels. It involves the universe. The kingdom of God is bigger than the church. Nevertheless, the church is part of the kingdom of God. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. The bigger picture is the kingdom of God. But now, God has involved us in the building of his church. How do you get in the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, you get it through two ways. Faith and repentance. Somebody say faith and repentance. The, the book of John is very clear. You don't get in the kingdom of God like the way the people of this world get into the kingdoms of this world. Somebody can go with me in the book of Matthew 4.17. The book of Matthew 4.17. The book of Matthew 4.17. The Bible says, are you there? Matthew 4.17. From the time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent for the kingdom of God is at heart. Repent for the kingdom of God is at heart. The book of Mark 1.15, the book of Mark 1.15 is something we are driving at. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming, that is Mark 1.14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Two things, two things. Repent and believe. Faith. Repenting. What is to repent? It's to check on how you have carried out your life. And you realize it was not the right way to carry out your life. And you make a U-turn, and that U-turn and then leaving your old ways and going to God's way, it's called repentance. And that is how people get into the kingdom of God. And number two, by having faith, by believing. So when God came, when Christ came on this world, he had a laugh time. Because the people who were expecting him, he did not come the way they wanted. They wanted somebody who could come and overthrow the Roman Empire. <laughs> Most of the times we, we look forward to election years because we think there will be changes. There will be changes that will come with the elections and all that. And at times we think somebody will realize, um, a charismatic leader will realize, a, a, a convincing leader will realize, and, and maybe bring changes. And, and these people, that's what was in their mind. Somebody will come and, and change and overturn the Roman government, and that is our Messiah, that's our king. That is the king we want to lead our kingdom. Somebody will overthrow the Roman Empire. But Jesus did not come to overthrow the physical empire. He came for the spiritual one. And he said, my kingdom is not gotten through fights. Somebody say fights. My kingdom is not gotten through swords. My, my kingdom is not gotten through tankers, through AK-47, through... There uh, <laughs> was one and two, and I don't know how many they are. My, my kingdom is not gotten through that. His point was, only two things are required for my kingdom to be established. Faith, and repentance. Somebody say faith and repentance. And I want to submit to us, this kingdom of God is not a physical kingdom. This kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. And we will not be able to build the church of God by getting physical. We will not be able to establish the kingdom of God by getting personal. We will not be able to establish the kingdom of God by going head to head. This kingdom is spiritual, and according to the blueprint, faith is required, repentance is required. Somebody say repentance. Yes. Now, the church, according to Christ, can be broken down into two formations. The first formation is the universal one. 
the universal one, all over the world, the universal one. The, the second formation is the local one, like we are seated here, a local church. According to the book of Matthew, where Peter is conversing with Jesus, it is represents the universal church. Where Christ says, on this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. At that point, Christ was referring to the universal one. All over the world, the church universal one. In the book of Matthew 18, he is referring to the local church. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So, so when you meet in formations of two, three, in one building, that's a local church. So when we are talking about the church of God, you must know we are either in universal and all local churches must be part and parcel of the universal church. Somebody say universal church. Universal. And what makes us part of it? We are in Christ. Somebody say we are in Christ. Christ unifies us. I find it very hard when I hear people fighting another church. I don't understand why I should spend my energies fighting another church. Maybe they don't come in white clothes like we come here in white clothes and with robes. But we don't do that here anyway. But we are saying maybe they don't do this the way we do it here. But it doesn't mean they are not part of the church. What makes us all part of the universal church is Jesus Christ. Is the one who unifies us. Whether, in fact, the scripture says, nobody can appreciate Christ as Lord unless the Spirit of God is in him. Nobody can be able to appreciate that Jesus is Lord and acknowledge him as Lord unless the Spirit of God is in him. So, the universal church, let's not spend our energies fighting the other church. And we have more work to do, we have bigger assignments to do other than checking out the other church, oh, we are doing things this way or that way. That's not our business. Let us concentrate. How is your local church doing? Concentrate on that. How can it grow? How can it accomplish the purposes of God? The universal one, leave it with the owner of that universal one, Jesus Christ. Somebody say Jesus Christ. Somebody say Jesus Christ. Let's not endeavor to critique other churches. We are the church of Jesus Christ. And whether we do our things this way or that way, Christ said, you see, in a field, I'll come and sow wheat. And somebody will do tears. But you people, it's not your business to pluck out tears and leave the wheat. He said, the master will come and do it himself. Somebody said, the master will come and do it. So let, let's focus on Christ Jesus. Somebody say Jesus Christ. Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus Christ. Jesus. We find Moses being told by God, this is how you build tabernacle. We find David told by God, this is how my temple will be built. We find Noah being told by God, this is how the ark will be built. We find Nehemiah knowing how the world will be built. Meaning, in anything God is building, <laughs> anything God is building, he will not tell you to do it your way. Anything that God is doing, <laughs> he will order it. And he will give you details on how it should be done. In those days, God wanted a temple built. In those days, God wanted a ark built. In those days, God wanted a tabernacle built. In those days, God wanted a church built. Somebody say a church. If you ask me what is God doing in these days, I'll tell you he is building a church. If, if you ask me, oh, in the mind of God concerning the universe, the world, what is his plan? I'll tell you his plan is the church. If you ask me, when God is up in heaven, what goes on in his mind concerning the world? 
Is it the politics of the day? Is, the, is it the economy of the day? I, I tell you, what goes in the mind of God is the church. I, I don't know how many of us have been involved in a major project or in a big thing going on in their lives. And you realize you always think about that. And I want to submit to us, as we speak, in this dispensation, what is critical in the plan of God is the church. Somebody say the church. church. Somebody say the church. church. In the time of Noah, <laughs> these guys are these guys are joking. Ati kutanyesha, ati kutanyesha, kutanyesha aji. And we have skyscrapers allowed. Even if it rains, cats, dogs, donkeys, and horses, we shall cry by skyscrapers. Even today, I'm telling you, God's plan and agenda is the church. And some people have not gotten it. We have learned people. We have philosophers. We have elites. We have powerful leaders. We have charismatic leaders. We have not yet gotten what is the plan of God, agenda of God in the world as we speak. The agenda of God is the church. Somebody say the church. Somebody say the church. Why do Christians allow other people to tread on them, to look down upon them? Because they think they have their inferior agenda. Why do learned people, doctors, engineers, lawyers, teachers, social scientists, and all these people, business people, shy away from telling people they are born again? Because they think the church thing is an inferior agenda. Why should we be bold anywhere we go to say we are born again, we are Christians? Because that is the agenda of God as we speak, the church. Somebody say the church. I will never apologize wherever I go to say I'm born again. I will never apologize to say I minister the word. Because I know it's the higher calling. Do your drawings, do your daily projects, but I know the part of church is the bigger agenda because that is what God is concentrating at. Somebody say the agenda of God. And God involving us in the building of the church there's nothing higher than that. You see, a lot of things are going on in the world, and I bless the Lord for that. We are doing super highways. We are doing housing projects. We thank God for all those things. But I want to submit to us as we do those things. Nothing compares with the agenda of God in the world, the building of the church. Any serious government, any serious government will not just be concerned about their big four agenda. They will also be concerned about the agenda of God in that dispensation. And the agenda of God, as we speak, is the church. Somebody say the church. And as God involves us in the building of the church, we must always ask ourselves, what is his blueprint for the building of the church? Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The New Testament church becomes the dwelling place of God. Somebody say the dwelling place. God is not going to dwell in any other thing in this world other than in his church. That's why it's a key agenda to him. Because you will not associate himself with any other thing. And I'll, I'll promise you that. The reason God would like to associate with you is not because of the other business you do. But the reason is why God would like to associate with you is not because of any other thing. He would like to associate with you and you become his dwelling place because the church is one of his key agendas and it is his dwelling place in the world as we speak and for that we would like to associate with you. Forget that and you dissociate yourself with the things of God. Somebody say amen. amen. In fact, I will not be embarrassed to tell you. You want God in your life? And sure in church, you are there. Somebody say, I'm there. Somebody say, I'm there. You want God in your houses. And sure, church things is key to you. And let alone look on what is this church thing. 
Somebody say the church of God. The key thing is that as we build the church, the model, the, 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 the plans we are following, they must align with the plans of God. With the plans of God. And, and what happens when we build the church according to the plans of God is that his glory fills the church. Ask me a question. Why do people complain kumekauka? Why, why do churches complain kumekauka? What is the reason behind it? And I'll give you a simple explanation. The church is being built as per the pastor's blueprint, as per the elder's blueprint, as per the members' blueprints, and, and we have put the blueprints of God aside. And I promise you, the glory of God will miss. The glory of God will miss. How do a church become glorious, full of the power of God, full of the move of God, by only ensuring it is built as per the patterns, as per the model, as per the plan of God? That's the only way the church can be glorious. Somebody say the blueprint of God. Somebody say the blueprint of God. When we talk about the glory of God, I'd like us to read again that book, Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, verse 17. Ephesians 3.17 So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the soul that is in the breath what is the breath, the length, the height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all fullness of God that scripture refers to yourself, says myself. Somebody say myself. That scripture does not refer to your neighbor. That scripture refers to yourself. That the fullness of God may dwell in you. You remember a time that Moses went to pray, they had time with God in the mountain, and when he was coming back, People were running away from him when he was asking, what, you, what is wrong with me? No, Moses, cover your face. We cannot be able to look at you. Because as he came down, the fullness of God was in him. The, the glory of God was radiating from him. And the, the, the book of Ephesians says, even us, somebody say even me. Somebody say even myself. The fullness of Christ can be in me. It doesn't mean that now you, you, you own up Christ and put him in your pocket. No! His glory can shine upon you and it will become part of you. Some, somebody say part of me. And how does that happen? How does that happen? Following the blueprints of God. How, how does the glory again come upon the church of God when things are done as per the initial plan of God? In all the things that God commanded people to build, including the temple of Solomon, including the tabernacle, in all the things that God commanded people to build, the last stage was always his sin. The, the last stage was always his glory falling on them. That was the last stage always. And the current church, I will ask us, are we building the church as part of the plan of God? And are we looking for diviners? Diviners to tell us, Nani ya mekuroga? Lete mkona yako. Naona ni uyu. Are we going to look for solutions? We move from the house of God and we look for solutions somewhere else? Because we cannot connect with God, and I will show you a church that is being built against the plans of God. 
And I believe if the church is built as per the plan of God, the glory of God will dwell in that church. Somebody say the glory of God. Somebody shout the glory of God. As we conclude today, I would like to highlight some things which are not a church. Some things which are not a number one. The church is not a building. Somebody say a building. Somebody shout a building. The church is not a building. We spend time building the building. And we spend time forgetting the church. The church is not a the church is not a denomination. The church is not a what is a denomination? A system built allowed a person, a system built allowed an idea, a system built allowed a revelation. That's a denomination. The church is not a denomination. Why? Because denominations always come and go. In fact, how do people build a denomination? God speaks to me. Somebody say, a man of God. <laughs> Somebody speaks to a man of God. And God genuinely speaks to the man of And the man of God, because God has spoken to him, wants people to follow him. And so he builds a movement. A charge or something or all those things that happens when somebody was truly spoken into by God. And after that, the movement becomes a monument. Somebody say a monument. The, the, the fire movement nowadays becomes a monument. All that can show the, the, its existence is a big structure. It's a big system. And the glory is not there. So a church is not a denomination. Somebody say a church is not a denomination. A church is not an enterprise. Somebody say enterprise. A church is not a what? So in all the relations of a church, rule out an enterprise. Rule out a building. Rule out a denomination. An enterprise? Yes, yeah, an enterprise. The more we are, the more we can be able to pay the rent of the church. The more we are, the more we can be able to organize uh, fire conferences. The church is not an enterprise. Stay of the church is not an enterprise. The church is not an extension of Judaism. It's not an extension of the religion that was there when Christ was born. It's not an extension of that. Far from that, in fact, that being crucified Jesus. So it is not an extension of that. And I speak this with a lot of humility. At times we take the things that we are in Judaism and we enroll them so much in a church. But church is not an extension of what? Judaism. A church is done as per the print, the blueprint of God. Somebody say the blueprint of God. And my prayer is, my prayer is that we will be able to understand how God planned and what God had in mind when in the first phrase, phrase he said, I'll build my church. And as we continue comprehending on what God had in mind, we don't take it like mind knowledge alone, but we start building the church of God as per the plans of God. The church is not a building because you and me are spiritual stones. Somebody say, I'm a spiritual stone. Somebody say, I'm a living stone. The church is not a building because actually it's built by living stones. Actually, the materials for building the church are living. They are living. And, and, and the mind of God for the church to be built is I being a living stone. I start again with another living stone. And somebody else start again with me. We build the wall and the church grows. 
that the materials God uses to build a church is not the money. Somebody say living stones. Somebody say spiritual stones. And, and, and for the church to be built as per the plan of God, every living stone must align with another living stone. And every other living stone must also align with another living stone. And, and so the materials God is going to use to build the church is you and me. Somebody say, you and me. Yes. And as we align according to the purposes of God, the church will continue being built. When I come to the church, I should always ask myself, am I coming as a living stone? Am I coming as a spiritual stone? And am I going to occupy my position so that the other person occupies his position and the Lord continue building his house? Somebody say, the church of God. And I pray, I pray that this church will not be built from other blueprints. We shall adhere to the blueprint of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I can assure you one thing. I can assure you one thing. The glory of the Lord will fill this sanctuary. Because for all places, God provided a blueprint in history. And the people in that time were careful to follow the blueprint. In all those cases, God always sealed the work with his glory. 